they are at higher risk of getting visceral obesity. That means the kind of obesity in which there is fat in your liver, there is fat in your pancreas, basically abdominal obesity. And you have even higher fat depositions in your heart. So you would say, why is that the case? But what PCS canine does is that it removes the receptor from the liver and from the pancreas that is sucking up a lipoprotein molecule from the circulation that is not just cholesterol filled, but fat filled. So if you have no PCSK9, then these receptors get overexpressed. The fat is removed from the circulation into your liver, into your pancreas, giving you a fatty pancreas and a fatty liver. The second piece of evidence is people who are born with a genetic PCSK9 deficiency. So these are people as if they're taking a PCSK9 inhibitor. So if you look at those group of individuals, they have a higher risks of being a diabetic. They are on an average higher weight than a normal population. And they have higher incidence of visceral obesity for all the reasons that I pointed out to you. And when you look at PCSK9 trials, the Fourier trial, or even the Odyssey trial, but let's take Fourier. They recruited some 28,000 patients. 28,000 patients is a lot. They gave a PCSK9 inhibitor called Repatha, and they dropped the LDL levels to 30 milligrams per deciliter. Now, 30 milligrams per deciliter for people who know about LDL is very low. It's almost close to zero. The control group had about between 90 and 100. And mind you, there are 14,000 patients in this group and 14,000 patients in, in this group. And if you take that larger number and you show absolutely no mortality reduction, in fact, a little higher mortality in this group, a little lower mortality in this group, that would be considered as an abject failure. So I have pointed out that there are animal studies with PCSK9 inhibitors that show that you are at higher risk of diabetes, you are at higher risk of visceral obesity. There are human genetic trials in populations that show the same thing. And then you try PCSK9 in a human population and you show no mortality reduction in 28,000 patients. And when you do that, you got to admit that it is abject failure. You should not spin the data and say, this drug is beneficial.